Thank you, Peter, and good afternoon. Now, my guess is that everyone here has heard of Fannie Mae. In fact, odds are that hundreds, if not thousands of you, actually live in a house or apartment that's financed with a loan backed by Fannie Mae. But you probably don't know exactly what we do. So I'll start with a few facts. Fannie Mae is one of the largest financial institutions in the world. We have a balance sheet of $4 trillion. In fact, last year, one of every four single-family homes in the US was purchased or refinanced with Fannie Mae. Now, we're also one of the largest providers of financing in the multifamily rental market. So how does it work? Well, Fannie doesn't operate. We're in the secondary mortgage market. We don't make loans directly to consumers. Rather, we buy loans from lenders, we package them into securities, and we sell them off to investors. So today, we're working to solve the biggest challenges in housing. We're always looking for ways to make it the whole mortgage process simpler, simpler, safer, less expensive. Now, the mortgage industry has been rapidly evolving from days of paper and fax machines, and now we're, we're moving to a faster, easier, a more digital process that our consumers have come to expect. We're also really committed to advancing greater equity in housing. We want a housing finance system where all people, including those of modest means, have quality, affordable housing options. So to tackle these challenges, we really have one tool, smart risk management. Now, risk management isn't part of our business. It is our business. To manage risk effectively, we need to understand the creditworthiness of borrowers. We need to understand the value of our properties. And we need to do it all continuously for millions and millions of loans. So we need to understand home price dynamics, macroeconomic trends. We need to process large volumes of data. And we need to include really sensitive personal information. We need to do it efficiently and securely. So to do all this, we rely on technology providers like AWS. Several years ago, for example, we built our serverless, high-performance computing workload with AWS Lambda to run Monte Carlo simulations on 20 million mortgages. Now, most recently, we completed a proof of concept running Amazon RDS on Graviton2. I have to tell you, the early results look great. We're seeing performance improvements of 54% and cost improvements of 11%. So working with AWS has helped us make a big difference in two more areas that I want to highlight. First, let's talk for a minute about COVID and housing. Do you remember how scary the economic picture was at the start of the pandemic? In just two months time, from February to April of 2020, unemployment swelled by 25 million jobs, 25 million. We had no historical reference point to suggest how borrowers or mortgages might perform under conditions like that. So we needed more information. We needed to discover new data sources. We needed to understand them. We needed to develop solutions for troubled homeowners. So in the past, it would have taken us months to do this, or maybe even a year. But we had to move much faster than that. So thankfully, we were already using Kinesis, our streaming data platform. That allowed us to ingest new data in real time. Now, tools like Amazon S3 took storage constraints right out of the equation. SageMaker gave us the analytics and the insights we needed, and together that all allowed us to quickly roll out new solutions for homeowners. So in the end, the results were nothing short of amazing. We provided forbearance plans on 1.4 million single-family loans. And to date, 1.1 million of these loans have exited forbearance successfully. That helps put homeowners back on their feet. So data analytics are also helping us responsibly expand access to, to credit for historically underserved populations. Here's a really good example. Now, credit history is a key element in qualifying for a mortgage. Now, most ways to establish credit are basic things like student loans or credit cards, maybe even having a parental co-signer. But people of color are statistically much less likely to use these forms of credit. So notice what wasn't on the list. 
rent payments. Well, it seems kind of obvious that if someone could make a regular, timely rent payment, they could also make a really similar mortgage payment. But credit reporting agencies, they, they don't take that into account. So for more than 20 years, we've been perfecting our automated underwriting engine. It's called Desktop Underwriter, DU. It uses technology and data and analytics, and it helps us understand whether our loan application actually meets our eligibility requirements. So we asked ourselves, could DU actually look at a sea of cash flow data and identify timely rent payments? So it's a little trickier than it sounds. There are so many ways to pay your rent. You can pay by check, by Zelle. You can make an electronic transfer. You could pay your roommate who could pay the landlord. Or maybe you even take your monthly payment and you break it down to smaller installments. So we divided this challenge into two parts. First, we had to leverage the new data source, the, the loan applicant's bank statements. And we relied on AWS tools like S3 and Redshift to store all that new data. Now we're also turning unstructured data into structured data through tools like Amazon Elastic MapReduce. Now second, we had to take these new data sources and make them usable for production. So we use machine learning to develop some algorithms and they read the bank statements. They go through and identify the rental payments. We use Amazon SageMaker to create features, combinations of these data elements that we can feed into our underwriting system. And so in September, we actually began using rental payments as part of our underwriting system. And now thousands of people who would have been denied before will actually become homeowners based on leveraging the power of a single data element. So these are two examples that show digital innovation is changing the landscape of housing. There's no going back. In fact, we are leaning forward. We're going to have our sights set on the future. Let's talk about climate change for a minute. We need technology and tools that are up to the challenge. And for housing, climate is, is now. So we're thinking a lot about housing resiliency in the face of climate change. For example, we need to understand what's the risk, the likelihood, which homes are most likely to suffer from flooding, wildfires, or hurricanes? Which homes would benefit from flood insurance? Which ones need retrofitting? And how do we make that retrofitting a little more affordable? So with better insights about climate risk, we can better protect homes and communities across the country. So clearly, our relationship with AWS helps us generate breakthrough innovations across a wide range of areas. Now first, climate is all about location. And we leverage Amazon EMR auto scaling and GeoSpark to support our location intelligence. We also use Amazon RDS with GIS extensions for quick spatial processing. Now, second, to handle really large amounts of data, we use a serverless ETL workflow that leverages lambdas and step functions and EMR to give us speed and transparency. And third, as we move forward, AWS Marketplace will be a huge asset. It's gonna allow all of us to simplify our data architecture and to share insights for the greater good. So this is a global challenge and a global responsibility. Making US housing greener and more resilient will have a huge environmental impact. In fact, it could have the same scale as reducing the carbon footprint of a medium-sized country. So helping with the pandemic, making housing fair and accessible, addressing climate change. For Fannie Mae, all of these challenges are within our responsibility. They require maximum effort, our best minds, our best technologies, and partners in and out of housing who are strong, capable, and committed. Thank you.